Hello everybody, this is Rob from Design Point, and today I'm going to show you how to make this, a self-packing scootoid. So first question, what is a scootoid? Well, a scootoid is this shape that you see right here. It starts with a pentagon and almost lofts to this hexagon over here. What makes a scootoid a scootoid is this transition area in the center here that is almost like a Y-shaped connection. And one of the special properties about scutoids, at least when they're in the right proportions, is that they pack with themselves super, super well. So it's a shape that was just recently discovered, just uh, last month, July 2018. And um, I'll show you how to make one here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna begin a new part file, file new. And I'll go ahead and, uh, once this is loaded up, start a new sketch on the top plane, grab my polygon tool, and set it to five sides. So I have a pentagon at the base of my uh, scutoid. I'll also drop a center line from the, one of the vertices to the bottom. And I'm gonna get my dimension tool and give it whatever dimension I want. In this case, I'll do two inches. And um, I use this center line not only to constrain this pentagon rotationally, but I also use it as a visual indicator of where the split vertex will be. So it's gonna be right at the top here. Also what I'll do, I'll get another uh, polygon. This time draw a hexagon and make it for construction. Um, so with that, I can actually use it later as a reference. So we're not just making any scutoid, we're making a self-packing scutoid. So this is what your sketch should look like when you're done. Hit escape. And now let's get another plane. We can copy a plane. And I will set it to be six inches from the top plane. So that's the top of our scutoid. And again, I'm gonna set up another reference to make my um, to make my scutoid packable, and that is to basically get a mid plane between these two planes. So for that, I'll go to Features, Reference Geometry, select the two planes, and it should automatically give me the mid plane uh, relation there. So I'm gonna hide that plane for now. We'll use it later. I'm going to go ahead and start another 2D sketch on this first plane that I've created. And now I'm going to draw the top of our scutoid. So I just centered it about the origin, but we'll soon see that we're not going to directly use this hexagon. All right, so the thing is, uh, uh, for most scutoids, or the, at least the self-packing ones, the centers of the polygons don't match up. And in order to figure out where it has to go, we need, need for it to be able to solve uh, as we figure out the side lengths and things of that nature. So I'm actually just using this hexagon here for reference. So I'm just gonna exit the sketch. I'm gonna start a new 3D sketch. So it's just hiding under here. Right click one of these lines, select chain, and I'm gonna go ahead and convert entities. And I'll do the same for that construction circle. It'll make it convenient for us to reconstrain this. You can click on that, make a construction. And now we have this polygon in our 3D sketch. The thing is it's black, meaning it's fully defined, which is means it's constrained. And if we go to display delete relations, we can see it's constrained with on edge. So the thing is, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those. We need to remove those constraints in order for this hexagon to move around. But we also need to make sure that it stays a hexagon. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of relations. So I'm going to grab that center circle and hold down control, select our top plane there, which is plane one in this case, and make that on plane. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna right click, select select each of these midpoints and make them coincident. So they're 
they're all touching this circle. So there's all our midpoint constraints. I also grab one of the lines and the circle and make that tangent. And that should constrain the hexagon, not only in the plane, but that it stays a hexagon throughout all of its transformations. So you can see the old hexagon that we've uh, converted from. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that away. We won't need that at this point. So now you can see this hexagon can, can move around. So now at this point, I'm gonna get my line tool and I'll start dropping lines to connect each of the vertices. I'll leave the split vertex alone for right now. Go right there. And get another one right at the end of that. Let me wiggle that around, make sure. Yep, cannot drag. All right, and now for our Y shape connection. I'll start by making the top of the Y here. And as of this point, I'm gonna start uh, putting some relations here. So now this is when, where our mid plane comes in handy. So that's our plane two. I can make that on plane. So part of what makes a scutoid packable is that this vertex is right in the middle of there. And I'll also constrain that vertex to be on the right plane. Now along that center line pretty much. All right, now I have those in there. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to them. So I'll do that right there, and that's the general frame of the scutoid, but I'll also draw an extra line here, and that's so we can get a relation. So I'll make that into construction. And another feature of a packable scutoid is that each one of these legs are equal to each other, just like that. And also, let's make sure that our hexagon has equal side length to our pentagon. So I'll select those two and make them equal. I'm gonna set the center of the circle to be also along our center line. Okay, that should be it, so let's see. Oh, it looks like we might be missing a couple relations in our legs. So, yeah, I forgot to make all of these parts of the hexagon equal to each other. Go ahead and do that right now. And there you go, fully defined. So that is a framework you need for a packable scutoid. All right, that's great. So let's get out of the 3D sketch. And well, this is just a basically like a wireframe. We need to turn this into a solid if you want to 3D print it or something like that. So let's do that now. So um, what I'm going to use is my surfacing toolbar, and I'll build this part up surface by surface. So I can start with a planar surface for that 2D sketch. So if I click the pentagon, there is our first surface. Now that these are all part of the 3D sketch. So it might want to bring in, in the entire 3D sketch when we do our surfaces. So to prevent that, I can actually use, for example, our boundary feature. And remember, they come with a selection manager here where you can select just an open group, just like that. So again, that's selection manager, select your entities, and then hit OK. And I get no preview, and that's likely because the uh, connectors are flipped. There we go. Even though it shows a break there, this should be a planar surface. So if I hit OK, yep, it shows no breaks in there. I'm gonna reshow the 3D sketch and I'll, I'll start working around here. So I'll use my boundary surface. So if I click on one, it automatically brings up the selection manager because it knows it cannot use the entire 3D sketch. So I'll just click that, hit OK, click over here, hit OK again, and then you can right click and then hit OK. And I'm just gonna use my Enter key to bring back um, the last used feature and just rinse and repeat. Enter. These five-sided ones I'll leave 
to be the last one. So I'll take care of this one over here. I'll hit enter again, right click, right click for okay, and right click okay. All right, and now we have a three-sided patch and a five-sided patch. I'm gonna take care of this three-sided patch by using a filled surface. So I'll go to our filled surface command and it looks like it wants to grab the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a 3D sketch, grab these two members and convert them. All right, now I should be able to use my filled surface on that. So grab the sketch and my 3D sketch is getting in the way, so I'll use hide all types because I just want this edge here. Perfect. And I'll undo hide all types. And I'll also convert this into a 3D sketch as well. Oops. Not edit, but uh, create a new 3D sketch. Click that leg and convert. So now with that converted, I can go ahead and use it for yet another filled surface. And I'll use hide all types again since I already have that selected. And just select my edges over here. Beautiful. And I'll do it just this last time here. So filled surface. Grab my edge. All right, and now we have all the sides, but it doesn't know that it's a solid yet. So to take care of that, I'll use our knit surface tool, select all our surface bodies and check this create solid. And there you have it. That's a scutoid, but does it self pack? So let's find out. So now we've saved our scutoid here. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is find out if it packs. I'm going to go file make a brand new assembly, hit the check to place the first instance, control click and drag for another instance, and I'll kind of flip this around on its head. And now I'm going to mate vertex to vertex. So I'll mate that, and I could mate these top surfaces here to be coincident. And now, if we make those last points, and there we have it. We can get a section, and you can see that there's practically no gaps. This truly is a self-packing scutoid. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, so have a good day.